College football playoff ranking thoughts after the first uh, rendition, after the first episode of the weekly playoff rankings. Uh, first off, how ridiculous is this that we are talking about this, et cetera? I've had a lot of people hit me up in the DMs asking my thoughts on this, so I'm just going to go ahead and toss out a few thoughts on it overall. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull it up on the screen. If there, of course, this you can find over at collegefootballplayoff.com. Uh, number one, of course, Tennessee. I don't think that's a surprise. that They've got really, really good wins. Of course, the win at LSU looks much bigger now. The win over Alabama, of course, is huge. Uh, you've got a big win. I say a big win. A road win at Pitt earlier in the year. A win over Florida, uh, et cetera. And you, you got a lot of good wins on this resume, and this team looks like they are peaking right now. They look fantastic. Ohio State at number two over number three, Georgia. Does not bother me. I could not care less. Uh, Georgia and Tennessee play this weekend. One of them is going to fall back anyway. Doesn't really matter. Ohio State has a big win over Penn State. Uh, you know, I know Georgia's got the win over Oregon. Uh, that's in a neutral site location, quote unquote neutral site. It was effectively a home game. Ohio State had to go on the road to Penn State. Like, it, other than that, these two teams are. One and the same. Georgia's got a really good defense. Uh, the offense, better than expected. Ohio State's defense is really good. And the offense, of course, is explosive. Uh, and they haven't had, you know, one of their best players uh, for a large portion of this season. Those don't bother me all that much. Clemson at four. I guess I get it. And I think this is where you start to dig into a little bit of brand bias, right? Uh, Clemson at four is weird to me. Now, I can understand them being over Michigan because they've got, at least according to these rankings, Wake Forest, NC State, Syracuse. Uh, who else have they beaten? I think that's it. And so those are their three wins in the top 25 of this ranking. Eh. I mean, they didn't look great really in any of them. And then you've got Florida State in there, and we'll talk about that here in a second. I, Michigan being at five makes sense because of how poor the non-conference schedule was, right? And they, they've beaten Maryland, which is okay. Uh, they beat Indiana, which is, I mean, you absolutely should beat them by three touchdowns. Uh, they've got a massive win over Penn State, but that game was at home. There, there's a lot left that you need to look at on Michigan's schedule. Uh, this schedule, the, the resume just is not there to really prove a whole lot of points here. Um so, yeah, I'm not all that upset about Clemson being ranked over Michigan. What I'm a little concerned about is TCU back at number seven. Now, I understand that the defense is not great for TCU, and I understand game control and everything else, but you start looking at all these different metrics that the playoff committee is looking at, strength of record, everything else, like TCU is ranked higher in those. I think TCU has played a, a stronger schedule than Clemson has. Now, you wouldn't necessarily see it because of who the playoff committee has ranked, you know, Syracuse, Wake Forest, NC State, all at 20, 21, and 22. But, you know, I, I, no, we don't have, you know, we've got Kansas State in here at number 13. Uh, but other than that, you know, you've got Oklahoma State at number 18. you got two top 20 wins, and Clemson has one. Yeah, I mean, it, TCU's got two top 18 wins, and Clemson has none that are ranked that high. Uh, so I'm... I'm very curious about why they have TCU where they have them. Uh, I will say, if TCU makes it through undefeated, this is just an all-time coaching job by Sonny Dykes and that bunch because their bye week, um, their bye week was in week three. So they would have to go through the entire Big 12 slate without a bye. That's pretty nuts to do. Like it's a, It was a weird scheduling quirk that they had there. Um, but yeah, I mean, week three for a bye, just ridiculous. Oregon at eight, totally fine. I think UCLA probably should have been ranked ahead of USC. Having LSU at 10 was a bit surprising, but, you know, this is coming off the heels of a massive win over Ole Miss, and you see what they think of Ole Miss with having them at number 11 there. Uh, so I might would have ranked the Pac-12 teams differently. Uh, you know, Oregon at eight, I think it's fine because they have been an absolute steamroller since the loss to Georgia. Uh, USC, I would have UCLA over them. Um, Kansas State at 13, fine. Utah at 14, a little bit surprised there. But, I mean, once you get into this point, eh, you know, what are we looking at? Um, 
Penn State at 15? Okay, I guess. Uh, your losses are to Michigan and Ohio State. You start looking at numbers. And no, the offense is not great for Penn State, but this, this is a pretty good football team with two top five losses. Might would have put Penn State over Utah. Just throwing that out there. Um, Illinois at 16. I like that. I might would have had Illinois a little bit higher. I might would have had Illinois over Penn State, to be honest. Uh, only one loss, and I understand that they haven't exactly beaten a whole lot of people. And the one loss was a bad loss. But this defense is for real with them. You get to number 17, North Carolina. I don't really know what to do with this team. I still don't know that this team is really good, but they keep winning. So what are you going to do? Tulane in at number 19. Uh, you got UCF at number 25. UCF wins this week. Tulane wins this week. We'll talk about it here in a minute, but possible game day implications? We shall see. Texas at 24, Oregon State at number 23. Okay. Um, is Oregon State, like, are they deserving? Really? Uh, I've got I got questions there. Um, Texas at 24, I mean, they've got three losses. I understand one of them was, uh, was without Quinn Ewers. Really, you could say two were without Quinn Ewers. But I... I think UCF deserved to be in. I think that's good. Uh, Florida State, I think, should have been in there if you're going to have Texas in as a three-loss team. Uh, NC State, you know, the fact that they are ranked coming off of just an ugly, ugly win over Virginia Tech. I mean, they finally found some offense in the fourth quarter last week. Uh, that, That was a rough one. Absolutely rough. So... Wake Forest being in there at 21. Of course, they were top 10 just last week in the AP poll before they got blasted by Louisville. Uh, curious to see what these ACC teams do going forward. Of course, you got Wake Forest and NC State this week. So, um, so yeah, I think TCU might have been snubbed a little bit. Uh, it's kind of obvious the ACC was propped up a little bit. But, again, once you get down to about mm, number 12, 13, 14, somewhere around there, uh, it all kind of gets hairy anyway. So I don't really know uh, that the first rankings necessarily matter. Uh, they matter as far as like maybe perception starting off, but yeah, I would not worry about this. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.